my dad was a polygamist from the age of 16. Can you believe that? Like in the 50s, they would just betroth a woman to you. He was in school, he would come back home and he would be told, okay, you now have a wife. There was this time, this particular time when he didn't, you know, come, come home. home. And the bigger sister who was also a party, a party animal was like, no, I saw your husband yesterday, you know, at the, at the club. In fact, he was with our brother, like our bigger brother. When we went to, to, to our uncle's, now my mother's brother's mm -hmm. house, he walked, he walked in on him with other women. We, we went to live in Isli. And even here in this house, in Isli, my dad was still not very faithful mm -hmm. to this stepmother of ours, who one day just came with a truck and just carried everything Kila from Kitu. the Kila Kitu. And he just left. I mean, she just left like yes. that. So <laughs> what happened is we were just left with an empty house. I was the first person in, in the, family. the family ever to be called to a, a national, national school, school to get the marks that I did. And, you know, everybody was talking about mm. it and all that. And all of a sudden, my mom just appeared. After not seeing her from, like, when I was five years old. Yeah. When, when, when I opened the door on the, on the seat, there was... She was there. She was so sick. She was so sick. She got uh, HIV. And it was these times when HIV was like, when you're on the last stage, it was so bad. If there's anything that uh, I, would, I would have loved to say, it would have been to him, yes. not really to the world. Because mm. the thing is, when we are living our present lives, we don't really get to tell people exactly how we feel about them. And it's, it's just sad that I wrote this book just after he's died. Yes. I mean, after he died, mm. yeah. So he was not the perfect human being, but he was the present par parent. A uh, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, yesterday I was wondering about the conversation I'm about to have with my guest today. And it got me thinking about my own dad. And I was like, I say I'm Lynn Gugi. Oh, to my people, Lynn Gugi. And I wondered if someone was to ask me to even write about my dad and I just talk his book or I just narrate his story, who would actually even be interested? And to be honest, for the first time I was so proud that I got to have his name I know there were a couple of issues in between but then yesterday I got to understand the power of a name my guest today has been raised up by a single dad she has actually credited her dad with so many things her mother walked out of her life she actually has no idea or no not much knowledge about the woman who gave birth to her and then later on she found out that the person who sacrificed so much for her this wonderful father was not even her biological dad and she went and put it in a book and guys when you hear of rough silk this is not a conversation about us advertising a book this is a conversation about a woman that decided to honor her dad decided to let the world know of a man they had no idea about and she decided to be vulnerable with her story and say no matter where I have been I am not going to adapt the victim mentality I'm going to use my story to inspire people and let people know that there is hope I'm about to let her introduce herself but before I do that uh, you know a girl has to pay a couple of bills here kama umekuja holiday ama uko holiday ama unafunga kazi and you are looking into investing in a holiday home have you tried ocean view in Vipingo by Optiven. Optiven are celebrating 24 years right now and I say they do not sell you a piece of land. They sell you a lifestyle. They make sure they are great amenities. They make sure the security is top notch and they are actually really friendly. I have been with Optiven for almost three years now and I've never received a single complaint about them and I love how transparent they can be so. If you have money to invest in a holiday home, check out Ocean and views um, in Vipingo and let me know what you think about them and also to say thank you to my incredible team for making these episodes happen and to you guys look at our channel 770k subscribers
subscribers. Wow. I mean, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, YouTube estimates that it will only take us two months to get to 800k subscribers. So can we do it in a month, my people? It will mean a lot to me. And now, without further ado, please allow me to let this powerhouse of a woman introduce herself. Good morning. Good morning, Dean. How are you? I am good. I'm like, such a huge, huge fan of yours and of your show. Thank you. Thank you so much yes. um, for everything that you do. Um, this world is full of stories yes. that need to be told. And I like that uh, you have a platform here mm -hmm. that is very powerful, that uh, tells the stories of ordinary people, yes. tells the story of the underdogs. And that is really, really powerful mm. because there's always something to learn from everybody. So I'm very honored yeah. to be in this show today. I Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank mm. you first even for making time. I know how busy you can be traveling around everything. <laughs> but before I go any further, could you introduce yourself? Yeah. So my name is Deborah Aukotendo. Um, I'm a logistician. I'm a security professional. I'm a dangerous goods specialist, but uh, right now I'm here also as an author. Yes. <laughs> I think I'm more famous for being an author than uh, what I do um, on the daily. Yes, yeah, that's just about it. Mm, congratulations mm. on your book. Thank the you so much. We were downstairs and I was like, the cover yeah. uh, is what... I, I know if I want to write something or publish something, mm -hmm. I know of someone I'll go into. Mm -hmm. But I also love what you said here, mm -hmm. the incredible story of a dad and a daughter. Yes. And Kizungu Munaitanga Ode, an ode to fatherhood, <laughs> a beautiful tribute. Yes. And you have also been, you know, uh, featured on the Sunday Times, mm -hmm. which is really international. Mm -hmm. But I know we'll get deeper into your dad. Mm -hmm. But if there is one thing you never say, about him in this book mm -hmm. and you would want to say today, mm -hmm. what would it be? Oh my God. Um, uh, uh, th there's just a lot that I've put about my dad in this book. Mm. But uh, if there's anything that uh, I, would, I would have loved to say, it would have been to him, yes. not really to the world. Because mm. the thing is, when we are living our present lives, we don't really get to tell people exactly how we feel about them. And it's it's just sad that I wrote this book just after he's died. Yes. I mean, after he died, mm. yeah. And it would have been even more impactful probably when he was alive if I would have told him what his actions and everything that he did for me, what it meant for me and how it impacted my life. So I never got to, t to tell him, I put it in a book. Mm. So one of my regrets is not um, what I should have told the world. I've told the world everything. What is one of my greatest regrets is I didn't actually write this book when he was alive mm. so that he would feel and he would know the impact he had on us. Oh. He was not a perfect guy, not by all means. This is not a book about the greatest dad in the world in terms of, yeah, he provided for us. We never slept hungry. We were, uh, school fees were paid on time. This is not a book about that. This is a book about a, a single dad struggling with with, with his children, there are times when he could not pay our school fees. There are times when, you know, we, st we went to bed hungry. Mm. Um, he was a polygamist. He made so many mistakes. Uh, women kept leaving him because of mistakes here and there. So he was not the perfect, the perfect human being, but he was the present par parent. Oh. And that is so important. And I, I don't know whether by the time he was dying, he thought that because of all the mistakes that he made, maybe we judged him or we thought of him lesser. Uh, it's just sad that I've actually written the book to, 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 to just tell the world that for us he was the perfect guy because it didn't matter what you were going through, he was the present dad. Mm. Yeah. Present. The present dad. You like for children, that is the most important thing. We are going to bed hungry, but this guy is here. Every day in the evening, he's come. You know, there's nothing as important for children like routine. Mm. We know mm. that by five o'clock, anakuja, yes. anakuja. So it doesn't matter whether we're sleeping hungry. We know that at five o'clock, somebody's going to be coming home. And that was so important. Good. He was not the perfect guy, mm. as, we, as, we, as we all are not, you know. But um, 
it was so important that he was present for us Good. and especially when a primary caregiver walked out and he chose to stay and he chose yeah, yeah. and he chose to yeah. stay i want to get deeper into your story yeah. but even before we can touch on what's inside this book you've mentioned when a primary caregiver walks out and you choose him he chose to stay mm. and one of the things i've had kids talk about especially when they know a parent left the question they ask is could it have have been my fault yeah. that my mother walked out of yeah. me did you ever ask that yeah oh, for me it was not i think i i, I know the reason why he wa she, she walked, walked out. out it's in the book mm -hmm. it's quite a very powerful scene because um you know when 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 now my dad um you know the way men men have this groupy kind of things and uh, they were going out they were drinking mm. and all that and he was never coming home you know, like a guy goes out and just doesn't come back home, you know, and he left us with our mom. I was still very young, but I remember, I could remember. Yes. And so I know the reason why he, she, uh, the reason why she walked out because it happened while we were there. So there was this time, this particular time when he didn't, you know, come, come home. home. And uh, my mother basically went to, 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 to talk to her bigger sister about it. The fact that, oh my God, my husband hasn't been home since Friday, you know. And the bigger sister who was also a party, a party animal was like, no, I saw your husband yesterday, you know, at the at the club. In fact, he was with our brother, like our bigger brother. And so because my mother knew where uh, 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 the brother lived, yes. uh, decided to go with us, basically to confront the brother, like, why are you hanging out with my mm. husband? And uh, he's not coming home, you know, like you're supposed to be like a mentor yes. and whatnot. So, um... When we went to, to, to our uncle's, now my mother's brother's mm -hmm. house, he walked, he walked in on him with other women. You know, you know, like the way men, uh, they, they can have a groupy thing where yes. one of you is a single guy. Now, our uncle was a mm. single guy. And then he has his friends who are his boys. Including so you dad. guys go out, you go to the club. Yes, of course, including. Yes. Can you believe it? Like, hey. the men, you, this, is, a this is a guy married. Low, I know, this is <laughs> a guy married to your sister. You know? know, you're hanging out with him. You're even providing accommodation, <laughs> you know, for him and other women. That, hey. is, that is like another level of, I don't know, betrayal. That, hey. So. So when, when, he, when, when she got into this house yes. and she walked in on him with not even one woman, other women, it was like mm. a groupy kind yeah. of thing. It was a betrayal on, on so many levels, betrayal by your husband, betrayal by your brother who raised you. And he, that's the point when, he walk, when she walked, walked away. Out. Like we saw it. I yes. saw it. You how, know, I how, saw how she walked yeah, out. How old were you? I think I was around four or five. Four or five. Yeah, four or five. Let me take you. Okay, go on. Sorry. So, 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 why she walked away, I know. Yes. But uh, the, the 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 consistency or the insistence of him not of her not coming back is where now you start asking those questions, like, okay, fine, uh, this this guy did you bad, mm. but we are still your kids, like, you can't even come back to see how are we doing. You know, you've left us like we didn't do anything wrong. Mm. So the questions for me were, why, why, why has it taken you so long to come back? Yes. Not really, why did you leave? Why, why? did you leave? I know. But, but why, have, why aren't you coming back? You're our mother. Mm. How, how do you think we're living? How do you think we're eating? Who's taking care of us? All those questions. All those yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah. Now let's get deeper because we want to understand the journey. At least we've gotten to hear about mom, right? But take me deep to growing up let's go there growing up at what, what 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 happened to you what what you know the things that you went through that actually made you sit back one day and say i have to put this down mm -hmm. in a book this mm -hmm. is the rough silk yeah it was it, it's quite an incredible story mm -hmm. to be honest with mm -hmm. you um <clears throat> So, of course, uh, our mom leaves and um, our dad now starts raising us from the moment when we're five years old. And to be honest, we, by, th by this time we were living in Umoja Estate yes. and it was a very good childhood because he was there. He was cooking for us. I saw my dad cook for us. I saw him wash our clothes. I saw him and, you know, I, I was this children who would pee in bed, you know, <laughs> and he would have to deal with that. Like, asubui, uh, you know, he wakes up, his finds have peed on mm. the bed and everything. He has to 
to wash me he has to you know he has to uh, he has to he has to take the mattress out to dry those are some of my memories when i was when i was very very young yeah. and then i think when i reached about six years now my aunties they're like no 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 we cannot it cannot if if the mother left we cannot just let it be like this i think we need to take these children and so some of my aunties you know came mm -hmm. and you know stole us like mm -hmm. you would be playing outside and you know your aunties just pick you up yes. and you're in a bus you're being taken to maybe another estate or another city and uh, you start living now with your auntie and one day again you're out you're, you're, you're playing kidogo kidogo you see your dad has come he's calling you mommy come 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 he picks you again you yes. he goes and hides you because he has moved to somewhere else Kido, so that we were being stolen every other time mm. we are in kisumu we are being hidden out, hidden out in meru we are being hidden out we are being hidden out everywhere to the point that this affected me uh, it, you see that is the age when i'm supposed to use, a kid is supposed to be going to mm. nursery school so i wasn't able to go to nursery school because if i'm put in an institution then it's much easier to find me so i'm always just you know staying uh, staying staying at home playing with kids at home so i didn't actually go to national i mean, I mean to nursery school i didn't so in one of these moments when one of my aunties um told me yeah. she, she 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 came back home and she found that I was playing alone and she asked where are they, where, where is everybody else and I told her I told her everybody else is in school you know said oh my god yeah you're actually supposed to be in, in school. school so she she takes me she takes me to St. Anne's girls mm. here in Jogorod oh. and uh, we walk into we walk into this school and uh, the headmistress could not believe I had never been to school like how are you bringing this kid straight to class one how you know and my aunt is like no just take her you know she's going through so much this kid i know the headmistress wanted to like throw me mm -hmm. out like no 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 i think let her just go through the process yes. and my aunt you know because i'd been playing with these children and uh, I, when they came from school, I used to ask them, so what did you learn and everything? So they, 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 they were telling me how to, 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 how to count, yeah. 1 to 50, say A, B, C, D, and all that. And so w just when the, when the headmistress was about to tell us to go back, my auntie said, mommy, count for them, count for them, you know how to count. You know, and I was like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you know, so fast, you know. And it's then, a lifestyle. Yeah, it's, yeah, and then... My, 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 my aunt is like, you do see? the ABCD. I'm like, yeah. ABCD, FG. Oh, such a small child. <laughs> so the, the teacher, the headmistress, yeah. Mrs. Masharia, but then she was called, Mrs. The, the headmistress at St. Anne's mm. was called Mrs. Masharia. She was, I think she was just enthralled by, by the, the fact that I was so curious to learn that yes. she took me in. Mm into class one without ever going to nursery. So you see, that is the first effect. I've already missed out on um, early childhood the education, the foundation. And I've just had to go to class one and start figuring things out for myself. And by this time I was living with my auntie and then again I was stolen now by my dad from mm. this school. I don't know how he used to find, <laughs> find out where I am. He stole me and then now he took me to a house where now yes. he has married somebody else. And uh, I've discussed all these women, you know, I've had about five stepmothers, you know. My dad was a polygamist from the age of 16. Can you believe that? Like in the 50s, they would just betroth a woman to you. He was in school, he would come back home and he would be told, okay, you now have a wife. What? Yeah, yeah, at the age of 16, he had his first wife. At the age of 18, he had his second wife. And by the time he was finishing high school, he had two, two wives in the village. Hmm. So by the time he was coming to Nairobi, he already had like, you know, two wives at home. And it's when now he met my mother now in Nairobi, yeah. but he had already two wives yes. at home. And I remember before, okay, the story, how the story goes from my uncles before they got married. Um, one of my uncles was aware and said, no, 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 I remember this guy. People, people were saying he had wives, you know, in the village. Yeah. So how is it that he wants to marry you, you know? And so their marriage, why it, there are so many reasons why their marriage broke down, but uh, deceit, uh, it was a marriage uh, that was based on a lot of lies. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and eventually it just had to, yeah, but it was a tumult as um, uh, childhood. At some point, my dad lost his job. We were thrown out um, of, uh, okay, we, we went to live in Isli. And even here in this house in Isli, my dad was still not very faithful mm -hmm. to this stepmother of ours, who one day just came with a truck and just carried everything Kila from Kitu. the Kila Kitu. And he just left. I mean, she just left yes. like that. 
So <laughs> what happened is we were just left with an empty house, you know, and my dad's struggles started there. We got auctioneers coming to yani the, f the few things that had remained, our clothes, books, whatnot. We got auctioneers who came and took them. We were thrown. We've lived in a, we lived in a church, St. Teresa's Catholic Church. We had nowhere to go. Eventually, we ended up in a guest house, in a lodging, yeah. you know, and you know, the craziness of a lodging, and especially in a place like Isli, we have the, we have the, 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 the ladies of the night, you know, who at night, they have written all about it. They, 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 they put on their makeup, they're going out. The commercial sex workers, they're going out basically to look for clients. And in the evening, they're coming back with the clients, and there's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of alcoholics. There's a, it was crazy. And Let me tell you, growing everything. up, you can hear everything. Because these are just rooms, and then there's only one toilet and one bathroom, yes. like at the end of this, uh, this guest house. Mm. So, Lynn, I ended up having to go to a, a boarding school, and I went to a boarding school really early because of just how crazy our life was, you know, as kids. <clears throat> and even in this boarding school, it was quite interesting because my dad would be so broke that closing day, nobody would pick me from school. And I would have to live with the nuns in school, you know. And, you know, uh, morning comes, children are picked up, you know, from 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I'm there waiting for him. 10 o'clock figures, nothing. Midday figures, sanane, satisa. Besakumi, like everybody has left. Mm -hmm. And now they, because I went to a, a boarding school that was... Mm -hmm. uh, a Catholic school, Mukumu Girls Primary Boarding School. Yeah. It was a it, it was a convent basically. Yes. So now I have to be adopted by the by the by the sisters, and I spend the whole holiday with them. And then guys open school and they find me, you know, again in school. So it was really really tight. And um, I remember at some point I joined drama, so that I could just come to Nairobi because I, I ended up being a very good poet, a very good. Um, I was very good in drama, basically. Yes. So I joined the drama because if you made it to the nationals, you are definitely coming to perform at KCC. Yes. And I always felt, if these guys don't even have fare mm -hmm. to pick me up from, <laughs> from school, let me, let me join drama, work so hard in the theater, and come to Nairobi. And then from Nairobi, I mean, it's just here. Yes. Would you believe there's a year I came to, we came to Nairobi, I performed. <clears throat> and when we were done performing, I went back to school with a school bus because there was just nobody to pick me, mm -hmm. you know. And these were very tough moments because at this time uh, he didn't have anywhere really to live. They were living, be, you know, with friends. And, you know, I have a little brother whom he was living with, mm -hmm. who was surviving this life with him. So it was a very tough, it was a very tough life. But God is good. When I, when I finished high school, I mean pr primary school, I performed really, really well. I was among the top students. In Kakamega District, so I, I went to, I was called to two national schools, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. I was called to Alliance, and then I was called to Moy Girls High School, Eldred. Yeah. yeah, but um, Alliance was quite expensive. We had not yet had this, uh, this, this system by Kibaki that came, it was free yes. secondary education. Yeah. So national schools were really, really expensive. <clears throat> so we opted to go for Moy Girls High School, Eldred. And all of a sudden, you know, like, I was the first person in... In the, family. the family ever to be called to a, a national, national school, school to get the marks that I did. And, you know, everybody was talking about mm. it and all that. And all of a sudden, my mom just appeared. After not seeing her from, like, when I was five years old. Yeah. And so she's the one who took me to, to school. Yeah. So she showed up. Yeah. But what does... The, now... You need some? The initial, I'm sorry. it's all right. The initial reaction would be like, mommy is back, right? You excited, of course, my mom is back. When she, were you excited? Oh, it was far gone. It was far gone. Ah. Yeah. But she took you to school. But now looking back, I remember there is a day, because also my, my, my dad would do the disappearance, appearance, disappearance, appearance, disappearance, appearance. And you are always so excited. For me, I was really excited, like Nilijuei Nichipo, Hapa Sasa Soft Life Kidogo, and all that, right? But then when that, they withdraw, it leaves you 
again wishing they never came in the first place. Yeah. yeah. You know, actually, uh, taking you back, mm. I remember when I was, I think, uh, before I left St. Anne's Girls, she came back uh, to, to, to that school. By yeah. the way, before high school, she actually came back once. Mm. And she came back once to, um, she was looking for a job. And you know, the way in which she left, as I explained yes. to you, she never came back home. So she left her papers, she left everything. Her, her certificates, she left them home, so my dad was holding them. Mm. So, and she, she, she needed to, to look for jobs and all that. So she came to St. Anne's with my auntie, that, my auntie who, who had been raising me mm -hmm. before. And uh, she told me about it. I was so young. I think I was like nine or ten. And she told me that, Mommy, uh, you know, uh, I need some, my, some certificates. Your dad is holding them. Mm. Is it possible for you to go and steal mm. them for me? Mm. And, okay. and I was like, okay, sawa sawa. Mm. I, that lean, I was so excited to see her. I, wa I was so excited to see her. That time I was around nine or ten. Mm. And I thought that she had come for me. Yes, I, I was living with a stepmother who was amazing, but I thought she had come for me. So she told me, so are you going to go back home today and, you know, help me like steal these papers and everything? I said, yeah, yeah, obviously, of course. So I went back home, of course. And I, I, I mean, it was a small house. It mm -hmm. was a one bedroom house in Isli. I knew exactly. My father was a very um, organized. organized guy, extremely organized. Yeah. Everything was kept in <coughs> files. I knew exactly where mm -hmm. they were. So I went, you know, and I stole the, the certificates. Yeah. And uh, I told my little brother, oh my God, you know, our mom is back. Our mom is back. So you just be on the lookout tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We might come and pick you, you know. And uh, then I went back to school that day. I was so excited, you know. I even told my desk mate, you know what? My mom has come back and so I don't think even, you know, I'll be back in this school. I'll be living with her because she was not, li not living in Nairobi. Mm. And then over break time, she, they came promptly. Like she came and uh, I, I went and gave her the, the certificates. I was so proud of myself. Everything that she had asked me to bring, I brought, you know. And so they took me from school, actually, and we went to my auntie's, mm -hmm. now the sister. And uh, I was telling her all about everything, about, you know, I came to school, I went to school in, uh, in class one. I'd never gone to nursery, but, you know, I'm topping my class. I'm very good in composition. My compositions are always being read in the class. I, I was just like, I was pitching, you know. You were pitching. I was pitching, you know, like to be, to be picked by her, you know, and... Um, the stories went on, and then at around three or four, uh, she just told the auntie, by the way, what time are we taking this kid back? You know, oh. you know, we need to go out. There's a club, they wanted to go out mm. clubbing and whatnot. I think she broke my heart at that point, and I never recovered, you know? You became so, numb. Yeah, I just, whew, I, I was like, you know, just forget about this. And I, I, I told them, yeah, then if we need to go, we need to go now. Because, um, uh, and you know, I had even lean, I'd even left my bag in school because I just knew I would never, I was going to start a new life. And I had homework to do, I left everything, you know. And then I was being returned to this, place. you know, to this house. And my stepmother had been so good to me. Mm -hmm. So I was going back to a place where I had, I had been, my, my stepmother treated me so well. Yeah. But I was so ready to reject them in like a moment, you know. And, um, uh, I remember you've asked me that question yes. when she came now when I was now joining high school. Was I happy? No. No, I was happy at that time when I was nine or ten years when she appeared after leaving us for so long. <coughs> and then uh, when what happened happened, I think I just yeah. shut her out. Yeah. So when she came back when I was about 14, now I was going to high school and she was like, yeah, let me take her to school, you know. And my, my father was always so accommodating to her. He always thought she was going to come back. And so when she offered to take me to school, my dad was like, yeah, yeah, please go with her. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to go with her. I want to go with you. My dad was like, no, 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 please. Your mom wants, you know, your mom is coming back. Mm. Your mom is coming back to us. You know, give her a chance. Take, go, go with her to school. And I remember getting into the gates of my girls' high school. I was really, really sad because I was not with my dad. I was with somebody that you didn't know. I didn't really care for. Not that I didn't know. You did not I didn't care really for care for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's strong. Very strong. And now, you know, I think in high school you become more aware. Oh my God, yeah. And uh, everything, actually, children who are traumatized when they're, ch when they're young, at that point they just absorb. 
stuff, you know. But the moment they hit their teens, 15, 16, 17, when the adolescent now sets in, you're finding your place in the world, you're finding a voice, you're getting an identity, you are mm. aware. That is when everything, you know, comes rushing to you. So I, I really struggled in, uh, with my teens mm. in high school. I think I still hold the record of four suspensions every year. I was being thrown out four, of school. Uh, wait, four <laughs> times? In a year? No, 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 like the, the whole, four years. The four, yeah, four. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was leading strikes. I was up there. I'm an activist, you know. Wait, I'm, what? I have a problem with everybody and everything, <laughs> you know. I, Our it rights. was crazy. Yeah, I was the activist. I was... I, it, it was crazy. I had this, I had some very crazy tides that used to come to me. It was impossible for me to calm down. It, you know, teachers, teachers wondered, the, yes. the principal, Mrs. Chernobyl, always wondered, what is wrong with this kid? What is wrong with this kid? You know, and as I've told you, we, we really struggled. It was so tense. Yes. She didn't know what to tell me. I was re already re rebellious of her. And I remember when we got into the dormitory, she met two ladies two from ones just yeah. like me, we were going to share uh, the cube. And she introduced me, she said, meet, meet Deb. She, she used to call me Deb, meet mm. Deb. She's a very friendly lady. She, she, she told these ladies like mm. that. And you know, it stuck with me. I was like, what do you mean I'm a friendly lady? You don't even know me. So when, when now we were leaving, I asked her, why did you tell these ladies that I'm a very friendly lady? Then she said, but I know you, I'm your mother. And I told her, you don't know the first thing about me. And I called her by her name. You know, I called her Pam. You don't know the first thing about me. And she said, you can't even call me by my name. I'm like, do you remember how you introduced me? You called me Deb. You didn't call me your daughter. You didn't say, this is my daughter. You know, so I'm just going by, by you. And I think it was so strong that I scared her. She never came back, ever. In the four years I was in high school, she never came back. Wow. Never came back. Mm. Yeah. So, so d did it put you in a situation where you have to choose? You are loyal to your dad or be loyal to your mom? My loyalty has never been questioned. To date, to 2023, it has always been my dad. That is why the, it's, the, it's a book about him. <laughs> my loyalty was always to my dad. But I know that when, when she left, I felt something. I felt, could you be, have been maybe a bit kind to her? And, you know, I started writing letters to her to tell her. Basically, I was, I thought she was trying to reach out to me. And, you know, after that incident, oh, my God, Lynn, after that incident, when she, 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 when she left, mm. when I went back to the dome, you know, guys were, what, what were corner? people were, basically, guys were, were, were setting up the beds and yes. everything. You know me, I reached and I just lay, lay on my bed and I started crying, you know. And I, I, it, it was such a mixed, it was an oxymoron. I love her and I hate her. You know, and you know, these this girls in the room were like, oh my God, it must be her first time in a boarding school. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> they didn't know I'd been in a boarding yes, school like forever. all my life. I'm yeah. just struggling with myself here. Yeah. So I started writing to her letters. She was never responding. She was never responding. She was never responding. And then I remember there was this time when I was suspended from school in Form 3. Mm. And uh, I, I told the principal, I don't even have fare to go back, to go home. And the principal gave me fare. And when I reached the stage, instead of taking a bus to Nairobi, I took a bus to the city where I, I had heard she works. I actually went to look for her. Yeah. And um, she was working with an organization called Care Kenya. And Care Kenya is a very big brand, mm. and especially in that small town. Mm. So when I arrived, at, it was like a six hour journey from Eldoret to Homa Bay. Mm. And when I arrived in Homabay, I asked around, where is Care Kenya? And I was told, ah, it's just there, you know. And I was lucky enough when I reached there, I found that it accommodates staff mm -hmm. in the same, um, mm -hmm. oh, uh, what is it called, the, 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 the compound. Yes. And I just asked, uh, does anyone know where Pam lives? And uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, right there. And I went, actually went. And uh, I, I knocked the door, I remember, and it was open, and I opened. And, you know, when, 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 <laughs> That, that scene when when I when 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 I opened the door on the on the seat there was she was there but a totally different person we had not seen each other for three years now yeah she was so thin and so frail and so sick that you could not even have recognized her 
as in it took us a moment to recognize each other. You know, she looked at me and I looked at her and I wondered, is this who I think it is? And she was also looking at me. And then she, she told me, Deb, why are you here? And then I told her, uh, we are on a bit of a recess. I couldn't tell her that I'd been thrown out of school. Mm -hmm. I told her we are in a bit of a recess. recess. She was so sick. She was so sick. She caught uh, HIV. And it was these times when HIV was like, when you're on the last stage, it was so bad, you know. And she was in that stage. Yeah. Yeah. And God, so I'm just imagining you're seeing her that way because, you know, the end product is I lose her too. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, how did you handle that? Well, uh, by that time, I think I had already created this avoidant uh, personality. Like, I yeah. get shocked by mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And I just recover really, really fast. Mm. And we get a discussion mm. about it. But uh, I asked her, what's wrong with you? What has happened to you? Then she told me, ah, you know, I think I've been bewitched. You know, uh, I, you know I've been, I'm being prayed for. But it's like I've been bewitched. She, she, she had everything. But you see... I was always such an intelligent child, and I mean, material to do with HIV, it was all over. It was a national pandemic by yes. then, like, you know, these are the signs and everything. So the moment I, I saw her like this, I was like, wow, you know, and uh, I remember when I arrived like that, a few minutes later, church people came and they started praying for her, you know, but I was, my heart was broken, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I was there to reach out. I was there to basically try to create um, a relationship, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But obviously you couldn't. So did you go back home? Yeah. So <sighs> that's the heartbreaking thing because um, after this church people went, um, she told me to cook and I cooked for her. She was doing really well for herself. My mom was really, 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 really like doing well. She had a car. She had... She had really, really done well in her life. Like, I could not even compare her life to how we were living in Nairobi, mm -hmm. you know. And so I had cooked for her, and I gave her the food for her to eat. She struggled with it a bit. Then, you know, um, at around nine, a Nissan pulled off, I mean pulled up at, the, at, his, at, at her door, and a guy just walked in, you know. And the way this guy walked in, you know the way the man of the house walks mm -hmm. into the house? Mm -hmm. You know, he walked in and you know me, I was just quiet. And um, he sat and, you know, as sick as she was. Because well, I, I, I'm the one who cooked for her, you know. But when this guy came in, as, she, as sick as she was, she stood up. You know, she can barely even balance herself. She stood up and went to the kitchen to like to warm serve. food or whatever for this guy. So, and he's sitting waiting for the food. Yeah. And he sees the condition she's in. She was so sick, like she could not sit up. She, she was always, you know, like lying the whole time. And uh, between eating, this guy asks, and who is this? You know, even without looking at me, like, who is this? And who is this? And my mom says, um, this is the daughter of my, 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 my sister, you know? So again, that's another rejection, like it was. Wow. Yeah. She could not say you are her daughter. Mm -hmm. makes you emotional yeah mm. Mm. as in even towards the end mm. yeah. of her life did you go for the burial of course i mm. did i mean f f after that uh what happened is uh she gave me fare and told me to go back t to, to go to nairobi to my dad mm. yeah and uh i arrived to to dad i was heartbroken so many times and my dad didn't even, you know, like scold me. She, she just, he just asked, what made you go there? Yeah. You know, you and he understood. Mm, you told him the truth. Yeah, he understood. I just said, I just felt. And I think it was a spirit that was taking me there. Something was going to happen to mm. her. Yeah, and um, she died some months later. And uh, of course, my father loved her, always loved her, insisted to bury her in, in his home. And so, of course, we had to go for the funeral. Oh, yeah. you laid her to rest at yes. your home? Yes, yes, yes. Talk to me about grieving for someone who knows nothing about you. Um, 
uh, grieving, yeah. You don't know whether, and I've written it in the book, you don't know whether you're grieving because you didn't know somebody or you're grieving for what you knew or you're grieving for what could have been. Yes. It's so many levels, yeah. Yeah, there's a reason I asked you that because I've always wondered where do I draw the line between, okay, you are dead, I'm going to grieve for you, but yeah. I don't know what I'm grieving for. Yeah. Like, you, you, you are not here, so I, I don't... Which of your parents died? Oh, my dad. Oh, so God. I was always like, it's, 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 it was always such a hard conversation internally yeah. for yeah. myself. Like, I want to do it so bad, but why am I doing it? Yeah. was the question. Yeah. Well, I feel for people, it's th that's actually a dark place to be yeah. in. And then there's so many unresolved questions, questions. that you have that can never be. Mm -hmm. They die with everything. Thank you. You die with all the answers. Yeah. Then you leave me with all the with assumptions. With the questions, assumptions. I don't, you, it's such a dark place yeah. to be in. Then yeah. the society expects you show up and grieve. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's something we should talk more about because you put people in such a hard situation. Yeah. They are dealing with their emotions. They are still processing. There are so many unanswered questions. Yeah. And then you expect me to show up and do the necessary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. So mom exits. Your journey with dad continues. Yeah. You said your dad was not perfect. Yeah. But people would, th would wonder why are you still on your dad's side? Because he's the, he's the present parent. Mm. When, when, when you keep getting chosen mm. by somebody, when you're always being rejected by another, you're, you, 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 you basically map your life around, you center it around this person who is always yes. present. He's the center. He's the person you've known from childhood all the way to adulthood. When you're always looking for validation or affirmation or belonging from your primary caregiver, the person who actually gave birth to you, and they're always saying, no, 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 mm. you, you know, you don't belong. But there's always somebody who is always like, come, come, yes. come, yeah. In the, in the African context, we don't always have conversations between parents and kids. Yeah. Did you ever have, co not that we don't, we were not used to having yeah. conversations, open conversations. You're in this stage. Of course, a boy somewhere is looking at you mm -hmm. in some type of way. Mm -hmm. Your feelings are changing. Mm -hmm. You are also admiring someone. Mm. Who would you go to? Would you have these conversations with your dad? Of course, uh, my dad, as I've said, basically, we, we were like friends. When I got my first period, it's him I told. He is the one who went to buy for me. Uh, the not even always. It was, yeah. what was that? There was a name there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stay free. Stay free. Stay free was cheaper stay than. Stay free is still around. I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was. Stay but free. it was cheaper than. Yes. It, it was cheaper than. Um, always. Than always. He went. He didn't even buy it. We were so broke. Mm. He took it on credit. Yes. He took it on credit, and then he told me, "Okay, mommy, bring your pants." Oh, mommy. You know, yes, <laughs> and you know, give me the. And then he showed me yeah. how to use it. Mm. You know, um, I had all conversations, boys, men. Se you know, se sex, sex education, all With that. Him. Yes, everything. Uh. You know, and <laughs> it was so funny how he was teaching me. You know, mommy, now that you're on your periods, you can't play with boys. I'm like, what do you mean I can't play with boys? You're gonna get pregnant if you get. Oh wait. <laughs> 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 so it was the yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the <laughs> sex education came on that day when I was on my periods. He was like, you know, now you're on your periods, you can't play with boys. I'm like, what do you mean? You're going to get pregnant. I was like, how? What do you mean? You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. Like, okay, so if I say hi to a boy, you're You'll not get supposed pregnant yeah, just yeah, by yeah, saying yeah, hi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. He really struggled with it. Yes. He really struggled with sex education. And I write even in my book, it is so, it's very rich for a person who is such a polygamist. Now when it, you, you have now to talk about the sex education, the irony. you're fumbling <laughs> with me, you know. And yes. by the time I was a grown, I was, mm. I was a bit grown, you know. I, I got my, my first, I got my period when I was, I think, about 16. Yeah. And so I had read novels. I knew about, you know, I was, I, I was, I was always a reader. Yes. Started reading. I think... I, I, I also dealt with my pain a lot in books. I read a lot as a child, a lot. I had mm. so many books, mm. so many books. 
when we were young, we were so lucky. We, uh, the Kenya National Library Services used to have a van that used to come to the estates in Eastlands, and then it used to park itself somewhere, and children would go wow. and we would pick books and we would read in there. Yeah. And then in the evening, the van would go. Yes. I used to wait for that van every Saturday morning. I used to just sit there and wait for the van. Why don't and we have that? I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. We used to have a mobile library. I think it used to go to like different estates, but yes. for us it used to it used to patch at Jericho. Mm. Yes, and we would go there and we would read. So I used to love books. And even if and you know the the, the, the guy who was in, the lady who was in charge of yes. that, she realized that and so she let me go with books. And at night people would be sleeping and I'd just be reading. I buried myself in books yeah, a lot. So yeah. by the time come on I'm sixteen, I've read Jackie Collins, I've read all the Sydney Sheldons, I've read about I know. I know. So I was just playing with him, you yes. know, when he's talking about you know when uh, mm. when a, when a, when a, when a, when, a, when a boy touches your hand you're going I'm like dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not four years old. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. My dad was my friend. The to effort. be honest. It's uh, the effort. We spoke about everything. Mm. Yeah. It's the effort. Mm. And as you grow, of course he grows as a person yeah. as well. Yeah. So you're growing this side. How was he growing or evolving as a man? Oh, well, uh, so he married and married out hey. to a point he decided, okay, now <laughs> I'm not getting married again. He married and, uh, married, and married out. out. <laughs> 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 to Andika Kitabu. Married and married out. Oh, he married, married, and then he married, <laughs> married out. out like, there's yes. just nothing. Uh -huh. there's, there's no any other product. Yeah. My dad went through a lot, and by extension, we went through it with him because every woman came with their own uh, personality, with their own style of parenting. So remember I told you before my dad married my mom, he had two wives Twins. at home. So the first wife in the Luo, in, in the Luo um, community mm. is called mm. the Mikai. Yes. So Mikai was like the oldest. He, he, she, she, she was always at home in mm. Shags, yeah? Then there was the second wife, she was always in Shags. Our mom already left. Mm. The fourth wife is the one we went to live with. In in, in she was amazing. Yeah. I describe her here as a woman who was selfless and was was able when 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 I came in w because I was always being stolen I didn't even have clothes mm. she gave me her kids clothes who was almost my age mm. she treated us fairly she treated us, she treated us well yes. and when she left our hearts were broken mm. me and my brother then my dad married again now when she married again this lady now the fifth wife oh my god she was born in Nairobi she was raised in Huruma she was crazy hey. <laughs> she was crazy she used to go out she used to drink she used to drink worse than my dad and she would come home at five in the morning or four in the morning or whatever time and you wouldn't tell her anything <laughs> and le i'm telling you <laughs> so do you know that my dad you know ha had a very bad relationship with yes. all this uh, this woman came to pay for all of them Ma she checked your they dad. <laughs> used to fight <laughs> the revenge she she character developed Please. Your dad. Actually, <laughs> after her, my dad never married <laughs> again. My yeah. dad never She used to come in and it was so terrifying. Domestic violence is such a terrifying thing for children. Yes. Because where we were, we were sleeping in the kitchen. Mm. And when she would come from the club, we would know a fight is about to, you know, a, a fight is about to ensue. And so it would just be, where are you from? Why have you come to my house, you know, at this at this hour? Like, ah, you can't tell me shit, you know, all that. Yes. And Kidogo, you just hear the bouts. Things are breaking in the house. It's so terrifying for children. Children can't sleep at mm. night, you know. And because I was the older, this lady came in with children yes. also. So in the kitchen, I used to sleep with, like, all the children. And you're living here. Yeah, and they're fighting on this side, you know. And these are your parents. So many things are, are, are happening to you at that moment because you're like, what if they die? What if one of them dies? What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? You know, it was so terrifying. So we went through that domestic violence live with, with our dad. They used to fight to the point lean because it was such a small house. It's like we are, we are, we are sleeping uh, in, in the next room, mm. right? And they're fighting here. They used to fight to the point you could see blood streaming in into the kitchen. Imagine, and your children, you know, it was so bad. And you know, to this date, I'm so, so scared of violence. 
anywhere where there's domestic violence, I'd rather, I'd rather just not be there. You know, yeah. yeah. And <sighs> also, what he does to you, cause, see, they are fighting. Yeah. Then tomorrow you see them laughing. And you're like, see, I thought you guys were fighting yeah, yesterday. Yeah, it's very confusing. So they fight and make up. They yeah, fight and make up. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. too confusing. It's so confusing. In the book, I describe our house by that time. It had so many broken things. We had a broken radio. We had a broken photo of Raila Odinga. We had, because when they fight, they fight with everything. People are throwing. Including Baba. Yeah, oh. you know, we always had Baba. You know, it's yes, a whole family. Yes. <laughs> we always had Raila's photo mm. there. It's like, he's, he's Jesus, yeah. you know. When things become bad, that photo is taken and, you know, and, you yes. know, it was a glass thing mm. in a vunjika. So we had a broken photo. I told Raila that he was, you know, Raila read this book. Yes. He was just like, oh, my God. You know, like, everybody should. So we had so many broken things in the house because of the drama in the house but eventually um they fought out yes. <laughs> and the lady uh, moved, moved out. out and after that dad never married again mm. yeah and so by that time now we are finishing high school mm -hmm. we are struggling uh, so i was called to the university of nairobi to do law and so uh now we are adults i know that the moment i grew 18 i moved out the moment i went to college like this i moved out i just told dad it's been real yeah, it's been real. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, uh, but it's been real. It's been real, Dad. I'm out. Yeah. You know, I'm out. Let me go and figure face life. the world. Let me go figure, 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 figure shit out for myself. Yeah. Sorry, do people cast on your show? You figured <laughs> shit out for yourself. <laughs> you went to figure yeah. shit out for yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's wow. Yeah. So dad is still involved in this side. He's married so out. So now, yeah, he's married out. He moves out of the guest house. Actually, mm -hmm. there's an incident that happens that um, the, I'm sexually assaulted in this guest house. And that what, that, that's what makes me leave. Really? Yes. I run away and I go to live with my auntie, mm. you get? Because I tell him I just can't. And so after that is when now he moves into now, you know, like a real house. Mm. And he tells me, mommy, come back. Now we live. I was like, I just can't. It's just not even that. It's a lot. It's a lot. I just need to be out here on yes. my own. And I never went back home, mm. to be honest. Mm. And uh, yeah, I go through college, finish college, get my, my first job in the legal department uh, yes. of Wells Fargo. Mm. Wow. And uh, where I still am now, I'm the group I'm the head of commercial. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so now, oh my God, dad again struggles with that. He, he was doing tenders and whatnot. He got conned. You know how tenders are. Sometimes yes. you're not being paid and whatnot. And so at the end of the day, he starts now depending on us and mm. my siblings. Mm. Luckily, our father invested in us going to school and uh, we all finished school and we are all getting good. fairly good jobs. Good job. So now we are taking care of him. Mm. And then, um, oh my God, we had such a good life in my adult, in my adulthood. We used to go out together. We used mm. to go for Roomba together. We used to go to the stadium to watch football, football. together. He was a Manchester United fan. I'm an Arsenal fan. You are a what? We, <laughs> Arsenal fan. <laughs> <laughs> we used to go together to watch. Uh, Even now, you're still an Arsenal oh, fan. Oh, I was actually at the Emirates Stadium the other day, two months ago in October. But you know, I went. To, I, I took this book to England. Yes. it was being celebrated there, yeah. and Man City was playing with Arsenal. So I went to Emirates to watch the the, 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 the match live, and they lost. We won. Oh, what do you that's mean? That's a fast. We are on top of the table if, right now. Yes. What changed? What do you mean? What do we have an Arsenal fan on, on the table? There TV? can't be one <laughs> here. <laughs> You're talking like a Manchester United fan. Ah, Mia, even let me tell I you something. I shouldn't have come to this show. I mean, the wrong See, we are done. <laughs> it's a rough scene, cafe. We are done. <laughs> see, we are done. Yeah, anyway, so, jokes so aside, anyway. we have said even countless times, I admire Arsenal fans. I like, they yeah, don't we are know very those. Resilient. They we're, know resilience. We are very they know, resilient. They know, like, they are loyal. We are so very loyal. I posted someone and he said, get yourself an Arsenal man. True. Very loyal. True. Very loyal. True, they, absolutely. They don't know how to cheat. They don't know <laughs> Get you an Arsenal yeah. fan, if not a player. Yeah, so yes. um, my adult life with mm. my dad was really amazing. Yeah. Um, I, w I was able to to support him. Uh, we, we, we lived our lives together. Like, I, I, I got married, mm. but I would still hang out with my dad. Yes. He would call me, ah, are we going for Roomba today? I'm like, yeah. I pick him up. We go dancing. And you'd find suitors. Mm. People, maybe men who are interested in me, they would yes. think I'm, I'm with a sugar daddy. <laughs> 
and women would think he was he was yeah he's a sponsor yeah and when somebody approaches that and like ah mm. i'm like this is my dad like what this is your dad why are you dancing with your dad I'm yeah like, yeah this you is know? him yeah so we had such a good life we were mm. very very close and then in 2015 he was diagnosed with cancer mm. yeah and uh, oh my god we gave cancer the fight of our life like we, we we picked him up from nairobi me and all my siblings we took him to india and of course when we took him to india i was the person who took him to india i'm the one who traveled with him i'm the one who like took him through the first stages of chemo before now my other siblings took over mm. and i've written in this book um so dedicatedly uh, the issue of medical tourism to india because cancer is the new hiv like Every other person knows somebody who's suffering from cancer, who's struggling with cancer, who is a survivor, who has lost somebody to cancer. So I've taken my time to really write about the journey, the ma medical journey of cancer from Nairobi to India, you know, navigating it. You know, I've written a lot about India, about my life with him. Now we are, we are two adults and we are now living in the same room, I mean in the same house, and we go to have very difficult conversations. You know, because at some point you asked me, D -d did you have a conversation? We go to have very difficult conversations about my childhood, about him taking responsibility in how our lives turned out, the lives of our, our, our mothers, how, how it turned out. I took him to account for all that. And um, then I left him, I came to Kenya and he was done with all his uh, chemos and everything. And when he came to Kenya, you know, of course, how it is, he's, he's declared cancer-free, but then because of chemo, his um, immunity is very, very low, that any disease that catches him, basically, you're down. Mm. So he died in 2016. Mm. Yeah. Discover a homely haven at Ocean View Ridge in Vipingo by Optiven. Visualize your dream coastal home. Call us today on 0790 300 300. The first question you asked me is, why did I think that I need to write this book? If you've sat for me for 30 minutes and uh, you've heard the story of what I'm telling, it's an incredible story. It's an incredible story. It's, an, it's, an, it's a story of pain, loss, triumph, success, failing, failing again. Retreats. There's a lot of domestic violence. There's um, rejection. There is... Um, Cancer, of course, there is single parenthood. There is, there's a lot. It's a very, very deep book, yeah. Mm. There is death, yeah. Yeah, it's there's a lot. Yeah, I wanna yeah. get to the book mm -hmm. and even why the title Rough Seal. Yeah. But even, I, I hope I'm not wrong about this. Did you find out at some point he was not even your biological dad? Yeah, and that's the thing that always throws the spin around when it comes to this book because when my mother was just about to die, you know, she was brought to Nairobi for yes. treatment. And um, the last conversation I had with her was that when she asked me, how is it that uh, you've never asked me who your dad is? And I was like, what do you mean who, 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 who my dad is? What do you mean who is my dad? And she was like, you know, the person who lives with you is actually not even your dad. You know, your dad is um, a Ugandan. Um, I had, I, I got pregnant when I was very young. She was 16 when she had me and she had to go back to school. And uh, when now my dad, now the dad who now raised me mm. came to now court her later on, eh? they agreed that nobody should, if she, if he is adopting me, nobody should bring this issue up, mm. you know. And, you know, and she left me with that. And then she died, you know. And... I never also confronted my dad. About now it. my yeah about it. Yeah. He passed on knowing you didn't know about would it change anything? I don't know. I don't know to be honest. Um because I feel like it was it I almost when we were having these conversations in India, yeah. I almost Asked brought it him. up. But then I just thought it would probably break his heart. Yeah. You know, I just I let and, it, yeah. And if anything, who really is a dad? Yeah, it's the, as I will always say, it's not always the biological dad, or rather the, the person biological. Fatherhood is not about the biological no. parent. It's about the person who nurtures. It's about the present parent. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's not, it's actually, it has nothing to do with biology. Mm. Yeah. 
Okay, I want to touch on your marriage a bit, especially I'd rather not. no, the, it's the rejection part, <laughs> okay. right? So, uh, I, I want to touch on your marriage a bit, not the details, mm -hmm. but you moved, of course, when you've gone through so much and then you find a partner. Mm -hmm. What kind of partner were you looking for? Did they understand your journey? Because if someone does not understand where you're coming from, it's, it's likely not to. Wow. To be honest with you, I struggled a lot dating and I dated really late. Like, I dated really late. Like, I was the last person among my peers to get a boyfriend. I was the last person to, you know, all that. Mm. Um, I really needed, when it comes to a person that I was going to get married to, I always struggled with superficial people, yes. people who are not deep. Because I always needed somebody who can have a conversation. Anytime I went for a date with a guy and they didn't invest in knowing who I am, it didn't go anywhere. Mm. Because there was just, there's so much, even now, there's so much to me. Yes. There's so many facets to me that you, we cannot solve by you asking me. So um, what are your plans in the next five years? You know, what, what, what do you do? What mm. are you about? There's a lot of conversation that has to go on. Yes. I always did well when I was dating with men who we, t we chatted so much. Even before we meet, face to face, finding out what are my philosophies, mm. what are the things that I believe in, yes. what is the heart, what have I survived, mm. what have you survived. You know all that. Any man who was ready to go deep with me that way, we always went further. Mm -hmm. But the guy who was always just willing to take me for a date, yeah. let's have a date, let's go dancing. Mm. Where we were not having real conversations, we never went we anywhere. Never went. So yeah, eventually I got married to a man who is very, very deep when it comes to conversation. I think we chatted for a long time before yeah. we actually met. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like that's important because we go through a lot. And I read something, one of the, I used to just keep referring to it. Just don't date someone, ask the hard questions. Yeah. Talk about bills, talk about sex, talk yeah. about your yeah. life, where yeah. you've been. Yeah. Talk about your demons, talk about what you've yeah. gone through. I think yeah. that's important. Actually, for people who've had a lot of trauma uh, uh, growing up, the best marrying friends, yeah. it's not even the guy you're in love with, yes. a friend. True story. I'm telling you, it you're better true. off marrying a friend. Aye, true story. Not the person you're in love with because yeah. love somehow fades. It's also not the person who physically is very attractive because we evolve mm. as human beings. Today I'm slim, tomorrow I might put on weight. Yeah. This guy might have a six pack today. Tomorrow you know, the moment time. men get married, come yes. on, you know, it's very rare for them to keep the yes. six pack. Yeah. You know, he's gonna have a tummy, mm. you know. So if you're going for superficial things like he has a six pack, uh, he's cute, he's tall, uh, mm. I'm madly in love. These he's are things that no fail. Yeah. Okay, I'm playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> with you. Marry a friend. Yes. For me, to be honest, that is so big. For me to marry some, for me to have made a choice to marry somebody, I was marrying a friend. Somebody who, even when we are going through darkness, there are things that you can never do to a friend. You know, your friend, there are things yes. you can't do to them. You can't do to them because they're your friend. You know, even when you're fighting, at the end of the day, you know, I still have to talk to this guy. He's my friend. You know, this is my friend. You know, when, when I'm, when, before I hurt, the things you, you can't hurt a friend. Yeah. You know, so my, my marriage is mostly, to be honest, about friendship. Good. Not really about sexual attraction. This guy is cute. Oh my God, he has a six pack. Mm. And the same applies to me. I would never have wanted somebody to marry me because, oh, she is, whatever She's, it is. Yes. Whatever it is you're seeing yes. in me. But to marry me because I'm a good friend. Good. Yeah, yeah. Hiya, let's go there. Rough silk. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Rough the silk. Book. Now, the contrast here. We are talking about silk. Never seen rough silk. I know. I know, right? Because silk is so smooth. It's man, smooth. like it's, it's, so, it's premium. It's, so, it's premium it, when it comes it's to fabric. It's so yeah. smooth, but mm -hmm. this is rough silk. Yeah. What are we talking about here? Now, this book is an autobiography. Autobiography. An autobiography is a story about somebody. One thing you'll always notice when you're going to the autobiography mm. section of a, of, a, of a bookshop, yes. it's all the famous people. Yes. You'll have the politicians, you'll have the, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize winners, you're going to have all the famous people. So that's why they put their faces mm. on, on the book because you're buying Obama. Yes. You're buying Baba. Raila. You're buying, you know. Yeah. But who is buying George Aouko? Nobody knows who the hell this guy is. So it doesn't make sense putting his face here. 
what you need to do is to put a design that is going to catch somebody's eye like what is this picture what is this you know so that was now i'm first of all explaining the cover. this why it's an autobiography that does not have the face of the the the, 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 the like the, mm. the main act mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so i've put a daughter and a dad yeah and then there's the influence you see that fire mm. it's the influence around us mm. and then there's a tree here yeah. the tree you'll have to find out by reading the book yes. what it means yeah mm -hmm. so this is a catching thing that when somebody sees in a bookshop they're like okay this is an autobiography but what yes. is this yeah. that's number one mm -hmm. rough silk if you i've spoken to you for the last 30 to 45 minutes yes you realize there are places where we are happy and there are places where we are really sad even when you're interviewing me, I laugh and sometimes I'm almost shedding tears. Yes. Silk is smooth, but then now I'm talking about rough silk because this is the meaning of life. Life is not smooth throughout and it's not also painful throughout. You have good moments you and you have, have bad, moments. bad moments. So rough silk, it's, it's an oxymoron mm. of itself. Mm. So what this means is I'm giving you an autobiography that has pain and it also has some very beautiful moments joy yeah so it is silk in that it's beautiful but always expect i would even put a rose because a rose has thorns yes. you know but i went for rough silk because i mean that nobody has mm. ever had something like that mm. so it's when you read this book when you read this title rough silk it shows you it's a full life it's a full life. None of us can say they're always having it mm. good every day. Yeah. And none of us can say they're always having it rough every day. Mm. So hence the title Rough Silk. Rough Silk. This title is also for the curiosity. You see, though you ask that question, everybody asks mm. that question. What do you mean Rough Silk? Yeah. What does she mean Rough Silk? Because silk is supposed to be smooth. Mm. Why is this this silk rough, rough for that you're going to buy the yes. book because you're curious yes the other thing that is going to make you buy the book the is cup, the fo the this image. photo mm. yeah so this is beautiful thank design, you so much the so i had to go overboard when it came to this book mm. because it's the autobiography of an unknown man when you look at it it should market itself by itself yes. it's a product that when you look at it should market itself mm. yeah so i went I, for a, a cover that was a marketing tool yeah. in itself mm. from the title to the graphics yes. and then it explains what this mm. is yeah let me so what one of the things i've noticed even as your first a crazy reception for your book it's been read by everyone so <laughs> i'm pretty sure even majority of the people that are watching have had an interaction yeah. with the book mm. but for me, I think my greatest fear, even to journal, it's the emotional roller coaster that comes with it. I'll be there writing about my dad. I don't think I can finish a paragraph. Oh, now wait for my mom. My mom, I don't even think I can even start oh, no. a sentence without going oh, overboard. No. My emotions, yeah. Naki Laki too. Yeah. When you are sitting and you are writing about, you know, rejection, the happy moments, you living in Isili with those, you know, ladies, yes, the yes. violence. Yes. And start, was it an easy journey? Oh for my God, you? it was very difficult because it took me. It took a long time to get this book out because of the emotions, yeah. And the toughest part to 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 write in this book had mm. to do with my mother. My dad, as much as my dad died, do you know? Even when I write about my, when I talk about my dad, I'm happy. Even when I speak about cancer, it's a conversation I can have yes. without breaking yes. down. But when I speak about my mother, that's when the pain comes because mm. it's unresolved. What mm. you are talking about, when somebody dies without you guys actually getting to talk about, you know, you know the, the, the hard closure. stuff, you are left with it mm. to deal with it, you know. And so. Um, Rough silk writing, rough silk was very tough. For the very first time, I had to go for therapy. For the very first time. I saw therapists, I think, three times writing this book. And my dad died in 2016, but I wrote this book last, uh, last year, 2022, because yeah. it took six years. When I was writing his um, eulogy, eulogy when he died, that is when the idea of writing this book came in. Because I wrote a very short thing about him and everybody was like God damn you've gone through so much with dad why is this so short, so short? and you're a writer actually yes. you write you write you know on social media and i said ah, if i start to write about dad we're going to stay in that funeral for like forever forever so what i'll do is i'll write a book yes and every year people kept where is the book every year year one year two year three year four year five mm. 
until now year six. Mm. Yeah, year six. Last year is when I started writing this book. So you yeah. can imagine I've had to deal with the perspective. When, the, when, when, when even his grief, I've had to deal from his grief. Because at first I went through a year of depression. That was the whole of 2017. Yes. After he died, I went through a whole year of depression. So, I, of course, I couldn't write a book. Mm. Then, um, it took all these years. And then last year when I started again, I could not follow through. There are some chapters that were so painful, you know, that I had to look for mm. um, help. And I remember when I finished writing this book, I was so happy, Lynn. But you know, when you write a book and you give it to editors, yes. they keep returning it back to you. Yes. You know, when I, when I gave them the book, I was like, phew, it's Done. over. You know? And then they keep on returning. And every time they're returning it to me, it's like they're returning a new wound. Mm. You know? And I have to go back again. And again, I have to cry. Yes. As I'm doing it, I have to return it. They return it almost five times. Mm. And I was like, then can I get, you know, until I understood why people get other people to write their autobiographies, you know. Yeah, so it was not an easy process. Not an easy. It was not an easy process. Yeah. I went through therapy. I put the book down for a while, even for three months. Because I started writing in February 2022. I put it down and I didn't go back to it until mm. June. Three, four months, it was just lying. I've yeah. just done maybe like four, four, five chapters. I'm yes. like, oh my God, I can't. Yeah, yeah. you are a self-published author. Yes, I'm a self-published author. That in itself is such a beautiful, beautiful statement right there. Thank Kitambo, you. I used to think by day if I write a book, I have to take it to these people, these they have to publish. Then I bumped on David Goggins, and he's also a self-published author wow. of one of the biggest books right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And he was saying like he doesn't want the hassle of having publishing companies right and all this how easy is that now to my question how easy is that for a kenyan right now and also i mimi i hey the marketing hey what you guys did you know this is the one thing people never knew what was i, I remember I the con back then i was I, I was on twitter i don't ah, use twitter anymore okay. but i was on twitter back then and i keep seeing this oh and actually the suspense, it was just this just, just this, this the suspense, yeah, yeah, yeah. The suspense yeah, yeah. that was just building up mm -hmm. this was one of the best kept secrets Thank you know you. but how easy was it for you to now market it to the world I will this is for all yeah. people i will start with the publishing mm. Every author would not want to self-publish mm. because self-publishing comes with its own challenges. Yes. Number one, um, you have to write the book yourself. You have to look for the editors yourself. yourself. You have to look for the designer of the book yourself. yourself. You have to look for the cover designer yourself. You have to come up with the concept yourself while there are professionals out here who, can who this is their job yes. you understand yes. and all these things take money if you if you have a manuscript and it is adopted by a publishing house they do everything for you mm. so if you have to do all these things for yourself it means your time yes it means money yes resources and a lot of it and a lot of it mm -hmm. printing now okay you've already written the book You've gotten an editor, they've edited. You've gotten a, a designer, they've designed. You've gotten a cover guy, they've, co they, they've, they've designed the cover. Yes. You now have to go for printing. Okay. Printing is money. And it's yeah. double sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to look for a printer. Yes. You have to pay the printer yourself. Yeah. Fine, the printer has printed. Now you need to sell. You see? Yeah? If you had a publisher, all these things, including distribution, taking it to the bookshops, yeah. selling it to people. It's all up to them. Mm. Okay, Vitabu to me print 500, this is your cut. You see, I had to write this book. I had to look for an editor and, 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 and have them edit and pay. I had to have a designer design it. I had to have the cover done. I had to go and print it myself. Then I, when the books came home, now I had to sit and, and ask, okay, how am I going to Same. sell these books? Who's, who is going to adopt these mm. books? I would like to mention Nuria. Yes. I don't know whether you know Nuria. I know what? I told Nuria you, those are my people. Revolutionary guy. Yes. I hope you've, you've, you've interviewed him. No, I... Um, you yes. must interview him. Umeskia. Brother Umeskia. Umeskia. Yes. Revolutionary. Mm. So, even after writing your book and you now take it to a publisher. You've done such a good job. Yeah, you, you, you've done halfway the job. Now you tell them, okay, now I have a book. Is it possible for you guys to adopt it, market it, and Stock whatnot? It for me. There are so many things. They want to read the book mm. to see if it's up to standard. 
the one to, there are so many red tapes. Maybe you've spoken about Raila in bad light or the president in bad light. It will not be accepted. Maybe there are some topics that the, the, the society considers extreme, a bit, mm. you know, a bit, a bit controversial. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in your book. It will not be accepted. There are so many red tapes. You understand? And so that removes the authenticity of an author from their book. You get. And so. They will just tell you, no, you know, we can't accept this book unless you remove this, unless you remove that, unless you remove this. We don't want issues with, I don't know who, we don't want, you know. So at the end of the day, even if they take your book, it's not really your story. It's not really, really your story, yeah. So because of these red tapes, a lot of authors are deciding to go self-published. The other thing is if you, take, if you take your manuscript to a publishing house, it could take even up to two years because they have a lot. Mm. They have a lot. Mm. It could take up to two years for them even to read your manuscript. Mm. Who wants to wait? No. You understand? People don't want to wait. Yeah. So you'd rather go mm. self-publishing. The other thing about, about it is that they're in business. They want to publish bo set books. Set books always take precedence yes. in this country. Yeah. They want to publish set books because I mean, the it market is there. <laughs> and there's well, a ready ready market. Market. Mm. Mm. So that is why you're seeing more and more self-published authors in Kenya because there are no publishing yeah. houses to take us. Yeah. There are no. Now, after that, now the marketing. I told you that I'm um, head of commercial at Fago, so yes. my background is a lot on mm. strategy, mm. on marketing. So I just took in my experience and... You know, mm -hmm. at first we started with the teasers. The yes. teasers is just to create aware, to create curiosity. Curiosity was the first thing yeah. in March before I launched the book. People, I, and I have such amazing people yes. on my timelines, on my social media. All I just had to tell them, I was just DMing them, telling them, please post for me rough one silk. word, rough silk. And don't say, don't explain. Don't tell, if somebody asks you, what is this about, don't explain. And all of social media was just a wash with rough silk crafts and people started asking yeah. do you know the dci called me mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they traced what is this rough silk where is it coming from mm -hmm. and it was stressed to me you know and they called me hi how are you what is this rough silk we understand it's coming from you yes yeah and i told them ah it's nothing of national you know security mm -hmm. concern it's mm -hmm. just a book yes. could we see that book you know and i had to send Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I had to send for us to continue with, the, with that campaign. Mm. So you see, by the time now I was coming to announce this is a book, book. I was answering so many questions yes. and I'd already created that curiosity. Lynn, I announced that I'm launching this book. I thought I was going to sell 50 books. In a matter of two hours, 1,000 books were gone. Yeah. And I had, I had booked, I'm telling you, I had booked space for 50 people. I had to move to 200 people, to mm. 250, yes. to 400. Yes. And to the point I told people, don't send money <laughs> anymore. anymore. I don't have. Don't. Don't send me money yeah. anymore. Yeah. Good. And God has blessed me. Mm. This book, oh my God, this book has gone everywhere. Yeah. Do you think it's healing souls? Do you think it's helping people now? <sighs> Writing Rough Silk has been so tough because mm. sometimes I go to my, my DM and the kind of things that I get from people who have read it, people who are dealing with trauma, people who have not healed, people who it is it has just opened up. Wounds. People the people who call me and just start crying. You know? The people who tell me I I hold so much that somebody told me that even after writing rough silk, you need again to go for therapy for being the person because people don't know where to take. Mental mm -hmm. health is not a big thing in Africa. People don't know where to take their, their pain. So if one person has voiced their pain, people feel that they need to talk to yes. me. And so you can't imagine how full my DM is of the sexually assaulted, the people who are HIV, uh, are living yes. with HIV, yeah. the people who have lost... Um, they have lost what? They have lost a, a relative to cancer. The cancer survivors, the people who are going through chemo, I have all of them. Like mm. I wake up in the morning, my DM is full. Yeah. And you don't really want to even ignore these people because at that point they feel you're the savior. But again, every time interacting with them, and I'm not equipped to because I'm to not a therapist, the, yes. it also puts me in a certain zone yes. because you, you always tap into people's emotions. Mm. You always tap into people's pain. Yes. Yeah. It yeah, took yeah, yeah. me a lot to mm. realize It's that. a lot. Honestly, now nowadays I love referring people to professionals. My goodness. Actually, you're in the same business. Yes. Every time you soak in pain. Like today I've come, I, I've come here with my yeah. own pain. Yeah. You've had to soak it yes. in. And you know, sometimes somebody writes to you something that you're not able even to sleep at no. night. 
So I stopped feeling the And guilt. you do not even have the solution. You know the, mm, the solution. The frustrating part hey. is you don't have the solution. There you go. Yeah. So I had to learn that mm -hmm. the hard way. Yeah. I learned you cannot be people's savior. I know. That's actually the harsh reality. Yeah. You can only do what you can mm. do. Because if you are not equipped professionally to deal with it, eh, then you are not helping that person. You and I've met people who yeah. have bought the book and I've never read it. Yes. You ask them, so like, from what I've had, mm. I have my own issues. I'm not willing to, yes. I'm not ready to mm. deal. It's I mean, let choice. me just, let me just, like now I've had an interview with you. Somebody will watch and will be like, no, this is a book I'll buy for future. Yes. I'm not buying it right yes. now. I'm not reading it right now. Mm. Mm. It's good to be aware yeah. of the season you are in, yeah. in your life so that you don't take in more. And then you put yourself in a situation where, but for me, it's one that I would recommend people get. I'm yes. loving the vulnerability in these conversations. Yes. Yes. I'm loving that we are able to look at our stories from a survivor point of view. Oh, yeah. I'm not a victim. Yes. Trust me. I'm not a victim. Mm. I can come here and laugh. The fact that I've put it out there for the world to read, yes. I'm naked. Everybody knows everything about me. Mm. Everybody knows what happened to mm. me. Everybody knows about my family, yeah. you know, and I, you know, I had to, to tell them, you Good. guys, mm. I'm going to write a book and I'm going to write the truth. Yes. And um, I know that this was your dad too. And you experienced him in a different way, yeah. probably than I experienced yes. him. I'm giving my experience. Yes. Everybody is free to go out there and write a book about the experience Good. with him. You know, but this is my story and it has to go out there because maybe it will heal somebody mm. and we are our stories. We are our stories. And Lynn, the most important thing that will always be a takeaway when it comes to Rough Silk, it's the autobiography of an unknown person, which means it's the autobiography of the majority Good. of the people. Because Good. how many Obamas will we have? No, just How one. many Raelas will we have? Just one. How many people will win the Nobel? Just one. Just one. Yes, the majority, 99%, are ah. the people whose stories yes. are in this book. Who, nobody tells because people wonder who's going to buy the mm. book. I've just come to prove to people that these stories matter. These stories relate to people. Our stories matter mm -hmm. and they relate to people and they need to be put out there so that people not only learn from success stories, yes. but also learn from failure. Good. Yeah. Did you expect the crazy reception? I did not. Okay. I did not lean. Let me tell you, I'm always on social media for three months and then I leave. Yes. Because I have a lot of work I to noticed do. that. You noticed yes. that? I always leave. Yes. I'm always on social media. Actually, I come on social media October, November, December. Yes. That's it. Because by October, mostly I've finished my, my KPIs. Yes. I've finished my targets. Yeah. So I'm just coming to make noise with people. Then <laughs> and you then go you to Christmas. Yeah. January, I'm always like, bye, you guys uh, see you in October. Yeah. I have stayed on social media, my goodness, the whole year. The whole year, because any time I want to take a break, like, no, 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 you know. And yeah, I did not expect mm. for this book to sell as fast as it has sold. Mm. And to go have a tour in America, have a tour in mm. England, mm. have a t have t be adopted at the Waterstones, be nominated. This was a big deal for the Cheltenham Literature Festival, mm. the only book from East Africa. You know, and when I went to, the, to England, girls were like, oh, so where did you do your literature? I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, I wrote this book in bed. I wrote this book in bed. Yes, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, yeah, yeah. you, you so deserve much, you deserve that much beautiful reception. Mm -hmm. You've presented us well. I believe it's not only that you self-published and it's making moves. It's the fact that people might take home. Put your heart into something. Oh yeah, and yeah. don't don't look at what everyone is doing. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, what can I do with mm -hmm. my story? Mm -hmm. And everyone's story matters. Ah, it matters. Yes, but matters. I know Nuria has stocked. Nuria is my bookstore of choice. <laughs> I advertise them here, and they don't pay me a coin. And he's it's an not amazing an, guy. An, it's because he's an amazing guy. Oh my god, he takes time with the customers. He recommends. He pushes. Books that cannot be pushed by other. I'm going to give him stores. three levels. Yes. Three levels. Yeah. One, Nuria accepts all books. Thank you. And that is why it's the capital yes. of Kenyan books. Yes. Number one. Number two, um, Nuria pays, let me tell you, pays you on time. Thank you. Actually, he doesn't even pay you, pay yourself. Mm. If you give Nuria one book yes. to sell, he'll ask you, okay, so Rough Silk is 1,800. My cut is this, yes. your cut is this. Yeah. If somebody, because it's an online thing, mm. if somebody comes and buys 1,800 a book, let's say he's getting 500 and yeah. I'm getting what, I'm getting what, 1,300. Mm. 
it is automatic because um, his system is um, designed, designed in, a in a way that the money just comes straight to the number that you Good. gave. So when somebody buys the book, it go, the money goes. You don't even talk. Mm. But other, other, other bookshops, oh yeah, we are, send us an invoice. Mm. We are going to do you a check. We are going to do... Published, Self-published authors are struggling. They're not, you can't say that they're people who have made it in life. Yes. You know, and to be honest, these are people who are very, very passionate about, about what they're doing. About their art. They're very passionate. I'm not even one of them, to yeah. be honest. My profession is something else. Mm. Me, I was just a storyteller. That's why when people tell me, you need to write a second book, I'm like, no, I only had one story and I've, t I, I've already told you the story. Wait, you shall say, now we are writing married and married out. So, <laughs> but the yes, authors here yeah, who it. are self-published authors who have written one, two, three, yeah. Kina Silas Nyanchwani, mm. Empress Shiko, people People who have written one, two, three, four, five books, a lot of books, this is what they do. Mm. And you know, you, they need the support. And so Nuria coming to meet, meet them halfway, it's really amazing. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. Let's give credit where credit it's is. It's amazing, it. yeah. But I'm about to wrap up. Mm -hmm. But before I do that and ask you for a parting shot, is there anything we've left that you feel like you could briefly address? To be honest, no, you are a very good interviewer. Yeah, yes. the fact that you've allowed me mm. to go through the journey from start to finish means yeah. I've covered everything. Yeah, I've covered everything. My parting shot is um, everybody has a story. Yes. Everybody. I'm telling you the truth. If you sit with anybody, him, him, anyone, and just start to learn them, to ask them questions, mm. how did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Mm -hmm. what, what did you grow up doing? How is your family set up? You'll always find that everybody has a story. Yes. But we don't tell our stories because we don't think they matter. We mm -hmm. don't think anybody will be interested in. We don't even document our stories because we think we have to be famous to write stories. Mm -hmm. Nothing could be further from the truth. Rough Silk as a book has revolutionized yes, that. Yes. It has told everybody that everybody needs to tell a story, mm. to tell their story. For the longest time, African stories have been told by white people. Read about the Congo, South Africa, all the atrocities ap happening in Africa. They are always by white people. Trust me. Go and look for, you know, any book to do with Sankara, any book to do with Steve Biko, Mandela, all these people, it's always white people mm. who've written. Mm. Why is it that we can't write ourselves about, you know, uh, why can't we write about Africa? So we need African writers writing about Africa. Africa. We need African, writing, uh, African writers writing about us. Our people. And in Kenya, we need a revolution of literature. Mm. 2023, we have really tried. There's a lot, there's a, there's a little bit more excitement when it comes to reading books yes. because of the aggressiveness by which we've taken the mm. issue of literature. Mm. It, we, we, we had reached a point in Kenya, people are reading only West African books, where you find West African authors are more famous yes. than Kenyan authors, mm. you understand? And there was, the, the, there was always the issue of, oh, we don't have publishers. We decided, okay, we are publishing books by ourselves. We are pushing them out there. We are giving them accessibility and distribution mm. through Kina, Kina Nuria. Even yes. TBC yes. has done really well this mm. year. Yeah, it took my book. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it taking Kenyan books and Beautiful. all that. So this is what is going to help us. Mm. We need um, the publishers in Kenya to be more serious Good. about non-curriculum books. Mm. We need KICD, uh, the Curriculum Development uh, of Kenya, the ones who take books to school, to be serious also about fiction books that are by Kenyans. Beautiful. That will be great. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So it's on Amazon also? No, no, it's not yet on Amazon. That's a whole hey. story of another day. Hey. So I went okay. to Amazon. Mm. I went to the US, of mm. course. And when I went to, um, I, I mean, I pitched my book. They said, oh, it's a beautiful book. The only problem is uh, you're not American. You do not pay taxes in America. You do not, you're not a resident of America. So we are going to get your book. They wanted to sell it at about um, $50. And they told me my card would be $5. I was like. You sell my book $50, you give me $5. Yeah. Guys, the book is at Nuria. <laughs> <laughs> they can ship it for so you. So they're protecting their, they're protecting yes. their authors. Yes. So oh, when, well, that's why you find diasporans when they had that, they were like, what? So now the book is, is just being sold by we Kenyans in America. We will They're ship just shipping them through everywhere. KQ. Yes. And there's somebody who's just selling them Beautiful. straight. And I'm, I'm like, I'm getting full profits. The you message know, must get to yes, people. Yes, yes, mm, yes, yes. I appreciate you. Thank I you love so much, that yeah. you've done the parting shot. But here we do parting shots a bit different. Okay. Yes. So you're not <laughs> doing a parting. Yeah, you're not doing a parting shot to the audience. You're okay. doing one to yourself. Oh. Yes. So looking at that camera, what would you want to tell <sighs> Deb? 
dear Deb. My God. Yes. Are you serious right now? Very serious right oh now. Oh my God. Let me see. Let me see. Uh -huh. I should be speaking to myself. Yes. Okay. Dear Deb, you survived it. Yes. And you lived to tell the story. That's important. Yeah. Good. And yeah. the story is beautiful mm -hmm. and true. Mm. Yeah, yeah, this is a true story. And we are People actually ask, is this fiction? No. Did this actually happen? What was easy to want to sell families? We need you to write a book. These are the stories of Java. No, 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 you need to write a book. Where Mimi Goja Kwanza Nifike can confidence plan. I want to disappear for a year and uh, actually and write a yes, book. Yes, and uh, no, write honestly, book, I have yeah. plans of disappearing mm. uh, for a full year from this show and everything. Eh? Oh, no, to oh, just yes. find yourself to take a beat. It's important. Yeah. It's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to fill my cup before I pour on You're right. other You're right. people's. You're right. You're right. Yeah, it's a wrap. Thank, Thank you, you for so coming, much. for Thank making you. time Thank in you. your busy schedule. Yeah. And I know my people, It's the, as I stated in the introduction, this is not an ad, guys. Mm. You can tell them for free, you've paid me nothing to have oh, this yeah. conversation. Oh, yeah, oh, my God. I've it's not, not, I've not paid ad. anything. Yeah. Lynn called me. Yes, I called. You actually called me the first day. Yeah. I, I was busy. I told yes. you, can I call you back? Yeah. And then you called me. They're like, is this the yes. Lynn Googie? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, yes, yeah. You know? No, no, no. I've not paid yeah. anything to be here. Mm. I've not been asked for anything. We are just yeah. having a conversation. Yeah, the reason yeah. I said that is because I really want to vouch for people to go and get this. Book. Yeah. Oh my God, this you, uh, it's, you you can say that it's because I'm yeah. a, I'm a are we still on uh, on, no, on the yeah, show? Yeah, we are rolling. So you can think that it's because I'm the writer mm. of this book. Mm. But let me tell you. This is a beautiful book. I yes. wrote this book and I saw, sat back and I said, wow. Mm. I remember one of the compliments you gave me downstairs is our shows are for ordinary Mwana Inchi. So this is their this book. This is the ordinary Mwana Inchi. This is our this book. This is their book. You know, even you see the photos, you see even how you've been able to define your dad and all that. I love this. The photos also. Thank you. Yeah. People are able to Oh yeah, relate. it has, it has, it yes. has. It's actually, at, it's, it's, it's worth your, your time. It's, it's about 300 pages. Mm. We have photos. Uh, yes, it's, we it's, have even a family tree. Yeah, it's Let also your yeah. little brother. For yes, me. yes, yes. You see, we have even a family tree. Yes, yeah, beautiful. I put a family tree. So when you're reading, you can always go back yeah. and you know refer and refer. Philip yeah. is not little anymore. Ah, uh, Philip is not little <laughs> anymore. I was with him over the weekend. Yes, you see, seen <laughs> in the stadium. Yeah, oh, when him to a gorma here. Ah, when him. That's our, that's, our, that's, our that's <laughs> Nini. <laughs> That's heritage. Any, that yeah. is, and we own it. That's heritage. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, we yeah. appreciate mm. so people can be able to just relate and just thank you for Lynn, why, why this is the book of the ordinary and mm. why it was so important for people like Raila, the president, to read yes. this book is they needed to understand a story from the from the people on the ground mm -hmm. not their peers yes not writers who are on the same or level or their relatives but the, you you know when he, I, I was telling you when you call for amanda mano eh. when you're on that vehicle these people who are running mm. this this is their story this is their story because there's a place i write that my dad died without even touching the hem of raila's garment and he lived his whole life for raila for that guy you know and you know, Raila read that and he said, wow. And I, I told him he would have died for this moment when now I shake your hand mm. because he lived his whole life without even, you know, getting mm. even as near as, you mm. know, yeah. Good. Mm. Totally relatable. Mm. And thank you once again for being here. Guys, get yourself a copy. Mimi sasa chani baki ni kisoma yangu. Go to Nuria, get yourself a copy, textbook center. Yeah, I textbook know it's already center. at TBC. Mm -hmm. Go get yourself a copy and remember, my take home, your story matters. Yeah. It does not have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be your story. Mm -hmm. and it it needs just to be needs to be your story and authentic. Mm -hmm. So go get yourself a copy. Really interested in your feedback as well. And this is uh, what is happening to you is also happening for you. Yeah. No experience in life goes to waste yeah, yeah, and yeah. no experience in life. Don't waste pain. Yeah, no Don't experience in pain. life also lives before it teaches you mm. what you needed to learn. Yeah. Right? Hiya, Chani Acha Kizungumingi, my people. Thank you so much for <laughs> watching. And also on the comment section, please let me know what your take home is. Yeah. A story dedicated to an incredible person. And also, let's extend. <laughs> There's a person in my life who keeps saying, Grace, extend to Grace, extend to Grace. You get <laughs> I'm, I'm beginning now to understand 
understand what that concept of yeah. grace eh, yeah. looks like yeah. uh, because sometimes and there's no perfect person in this whole there's world. None. There's none. There's That's none. why nobody can judge anyone harshly. Nobody can judge anyone yeah. harshly. So extend a bit of grace also to yourself. Extend a bit of grace to yourself. I've loved really having this show, but I, before I let you go, there's a question I'm asking people. Who else would you want me to interview? I would love for you to interview Nuria. Okay. When it comes to now Rafsil, what he has done, to be honest, yes. if on Mashuja Day I don't see that guy uh, on that on the list, channel. I'm going to be so upset. Oh, okay. I'm going to be so upset. He needs he, to, literature yes. needs to be taken seriously in this country. Okay. It needs because a country is its story mm. and the story is written by... It's authors people. so books have to be taken seriously and we need to have people from the lit from the liter literature space also fitted as yes. other artists and other creatives mm. are for me i would like to nominate uh, nuria yeah. bule yes to get something on mashuja day because he amazing he deserves it yes he Con deserves it me i'll host him yes what were mashuja against me stuck here going on your list yeah get there in <laughs> Damn. I don't want, but Ajue, we appreciate him. Yeah. As I'll, I'll make sure I do a very special Please, feature yes. for him. Just ask him what yeah. drove him. What, what drove yeah, him to set up that yeah, beautiful yeah, book that was store. Well. Okay, it's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much. And also, Nifanie sa favor. Okisha kusanya kusanya tu pesa. Na unataka retirement home. Enda tu pale mumba chani use sena. Oh yeah, by the way. Is, you, is this you being nice to me right now? Because Unataka Nipata is a person. Yes, 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 please. Okay. Thank you. So be my subject mm -hmm. on this conversation. Mm -hmm. Optiven, they have really good deals in Vipingo. Uh -huh. They have what we are calling Ocean Ridge, Ocean View Ridge. I've been to Vipingo to yes. play golf though. Look at now, Ukipita yeah. like four kilometers, uh -huh. just Hapo. Mm -hmm. They have a very beautiful project. It's called Ocean View Ridge. Ocean View Ridge, guys. Wambie, please. I think I'll pass by there and see. Yes. Okay, so are they, are, they, is, are they already on? The house is already Not on? Not the houses. They, 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 sell, they sell the, pro the land, uh -huh. then you develop oh. your property the way you the want way you it. Want. Oh, it's like this The way others. you want yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And they will always give you nice referrals. They will... They, they are celebrating 24 years, wow. the biggest real estate wow. company in Africa. Wow. So when that we I will pass by there. By there, I'll pass, pass by there. I think I should be going to the coast very yes. soon. Yes, and I'll give me on the feedback. And I, will, I will write Kapi about it. Niambia. Uh, niambia I will. I will. Me, me, that is why yes. I will not be able to do it. I will not be able to do it. Yeah, it's a wrap, guys. Thank you so Thank much you to everyone. Yes, I will not be able to at 10 a.m. Lynn Googie here, my email info at lnn.digital or lynn.googi at lnn.digital. I see the love. I appreciate it. I see how big you guys are vouching for our channel and I don't take that for granted. So may God bless you to on an indication again at 10 a.m. Bye-bye.